your co-anchor you have right there by your side? Oh, you mean this one right here. This is Nino. 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 Little girl. All right. Congratulations, everyone, for Children of the Corn. Thank you, good. This this franchise is such a guilty pleasure franchise. It's just a franchise that just won't go away. It sure. won't die. It's like Pet <laughs> Cemetery. It's like sure. it's like they buried the first film in the Pet Cemetery. That's right. So I'll throw the first question to you, Kurt. Um, why why do you believe we need to revive something like Children of the Corn? I mean, this this is a remake. This is not a sequel or anything like that. Um, no, it's not. It's not a remake. It's kind of a prequel. Okay. You know, I mean, you could say it's a remake. I mean, but you know, and it's about the similar things, which is children rising up and taking the world back of the adults have uh, corrupted it and, and uh, destroyed it. Um, and it's about children and corn. Clearly, there's a lot of corn. There's a lot of children in the movie. But um, you know, for me, it was uh, it was about you know, this. This story is is um, it's so fruitful and elastic that you can take it. You know, originally it was about religion. That's why the kids were having religious names like Malachi and Isaac, etc. The religious fanatics and the and the sugar, the adults weren't totally in the line morally. In this case, though, I said, you know, in, in, this speaks to our contemporary world where the adults are driving the earth straight into the ground. I mean, they're killing it. You know, a lot of it has to do with greed, with the GMOs trying to over maximize. Um, the, the capacity of, of our crops to get more money out of them. And in the process, they're killing everything. And, and this is these kids' world. And then they play in these this foreign fields. This is their playground every day. And their parents are killing it. And I thought, you know, that really, and also, you know, kids are so much different today than they were when the original movies made because of the internet. And they, they really started to find their voice and becoming politically aware. And, um, and they're starting to speak out. But at the same time, they, they don't get to make policy because they're kids. And in this case, they make their own policy by just taking the place over. And I thought, you know, this is really a microcosm of what could be going on today. And, you know, I look around at people like Beta von Thurnberg, et cetera, and I see people, kids, you know, this is something that's not so far from reality where kids are going to stay. we've had enough. We've had enough. It's our future, um, not yours. So that's why, that's, that's why I, I thought this is an interesting you know, this isn't just a rehash. It's a new way to look at it. It's a new way to use Stephen King's original template to tell a new story about something that's happening today. Well said, well said. Well, let, let me ask the actors, uh, what initially drew you to something like this? Let's start with you, Alana. Um, I'm going, I, I can't help myself. I'm a horror fanatic. So uh, through and through, my mom and I have a tradition. Every, every night we will watch a horror movie together. And we exhausted our list. We're always looking for something new. So if you have any recommendations, I'm all yours. Um, so when this came in, I saw Children of the Corn remake. I just went straight to my mom and I was like, you're not going to believe this. And she was like, oh my God. And I read the script and I, I always wanted to do a straightforward old school classic like horror movie, get to release the, like let my screen rip. It was shooting in Australia, which is like a dream. I'm like any other to go there and to be working at the same time. Oh my gosh. So um, yeah, that was what drew, uh, drew me to it. And then upon meeting Kurt in New York, I just was drawn to his um, his lovable aura and personality because he saw the <laughs> bulldogs on my socks and he launched into this it, it, like enchanting story about a bulldog in France. And he's he's acting it out in front of me. I'm just like sitting there, like taking this guy and I'm like, who are you? Like, I, we gotta work together. And then after that, I didn't want him to stop talking, but then when he did, we read this scene together um, that he just had dreamt up and he was the reader with me. Now, gig, that is not common. Usually you're given a reader and they watch you and like the whole thing happens. But he was my reader and that was such a treat because these are the words, like these are the words from his mind. So he just like was so, like had such a fire in his eyes and in his conviction. and. That is what the fuel as an actor is like having those moments where you feel like you're levitating because you're so in like the moment with someone and to have that with the director himself was such a joy so I was like let's do this let's go on this crazy journey and sure enough went out to Australia quarantine for two weeks uh, right before the international travel ban and here we are shooting height of COVID 2020 April gig when nothing was happening okay it's a miracle we did this movie with what we were up against so the whole entire thing I mean you could do a movie on just how we made this movie it was so insane against all odds it is worth mentioning that we were the only film shooting on earth oh yeah wow that is exciting you know what's also exciting 
is Kate, I have to admit, and my colleagues will have to admit, if we're going to watch this movie, we're definitely watching this movie because of you, because you're just terrified. Tell us what drew you into this uh, role, Kate. Well, contrary to what Elena was saying, I, I I did not have much knowledge on Children of the Corn. I was 11 at the time, so I don't have my horizons, horizons expanded very much on horror pop culture. But um, I got the audition and I was, I thought the story and the scenes that I got were really interesting and there was a lot to, you know, pick apart from them. And I, I also did um, an audition in New York with Kurt and we, we went through these scenes and we kind of went through, you know, like these like ad-libbed, like not, not written down scenes. We were able to almost like see what Eden would say. And I feel like Eden is also such a, like an interesting character because she's so strong and she she's determined to like complete her goal or get to her goal and I feel like that's it's it's a very it's a good message for people just don't murder people but like her overall <laughs> her overall you know personality traits I feel like would be a good you know almost model for people to do for their goals and their dreams and I thought that would be a very interesting thing to portray and show on screen. It's girl bosses. I keep saying that word, but it's girl boss. <laughs> well, keeping in the theme, what uh, Kurt created uh, for for this movie? What do you think about uh, you know adults um, destroying the world because of you know greed and other kind of stuff? I'll start with you, Kate, and then I'll jump to Alana. All right. Well, I I don't. I think. I don't know. I don't necessarily think that like adults are bad guys and you know everything's their problem, but definitely the world's it's it's influenced by them and things that happen in the future are influenced by them. So like if you know there's a political decision that affects now, it you're that doesn't necessarily affect now, it may affect later and it affects the world that we grow up in. So I feel like just sometimes there needs to be some sort of consciousness for the future of like if we're just focusing on what's affecting like you know adults and you know what we're doing now it's not it may not be the best thing for the future Ilana, i'm throwing it to you even though you kind of play a very young person you're you're in that young and adult stage what, what what's so think? fun about Bo is she's in between that right like she's right on the precipice of becoming a woman and being a part of the group that Eden goes after right so that that, that was the type of she's kind of walking in that that question I had when I read the script I'm like well are they going to target her she's kind of like not she's just in between both worlds which is really interesting to me and what I love about this the about the story is these themes of what you're talking about, which is the environment and how there is this inevitable, unavoidable, we can try and dismiss it as a collective, like this link between humanity and nature. You destroy our world, it will destroy, we will destroy ourselves in turn. There's a domino effect of everything. So I just thought it's such an important message. Um, and I go to this yesterday, but I'll say it again, because I love poetry. And I really feel like Sarah Teasdale, uh, under, underrated poet, she said it so well, and there will come soft rains in one of her poems. And she said, uh, and none would mind neither bird nor tree if mankind perished utterly and spring herself when she woke at dawn would scarcely notice that we were gone that to me sums up like this whole message and um you know they're they're poisoning themselves with what they're breathing with what they're eating in with gmos pesticides herbicides engineered man-made stuff and it's poison and it's messed up and think about it, it it's in this one small work you know one horse town but that goes out into the rest of the world it doesn't just stay inside that nucleus even though that's what this movie's focusing there are real world effects and it's a very real timely thing so i think it's important it's such a great message to put in this one that's a new spin on the children of corn so ah. <laughs> well said well said only, only only you could actually put a poem into uh, this conversation <laughs> that is <laughs> <true. Yeah. laughs> Kurt um I, I want to say it's been a while since you've been at the helm um I don't know if I could mention yep. your la la last film but is it coming back is it like riding a bike yeah it, it, it is um it's exactly like riding a bike it's like you never I never stopped um uh, you know, and you, and you don't have time to think anyway, you know, and if you do have time to think, you're probably doing something wrong, but, you know, it's, it's, uh, it requires, you know, your full attention from the, the second of the day you wake up to the second you go to sleep, and, and you know, also, because when, when you've made a couple movies, it, it, you've really done it a lot, actually, you know, you've put in so many hours that you have a lot of, end up having a lot of experience, even though I haven't done that many movies, you know, it's, it's so, yeah, the short answer is yes. 
<laughs> most most excellent, most excellent. Um, and um, one 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 more thing. I I know all. Oh, Kurt, seen the movie? Obviously, I don't. I don't know if every, everybody else have seen the movie. How terrifying is the creature? I'm not even sure if you even gave the nick a nickname to the creature because I know he who, know. He, he who walks. Oh, so it's the same nickname. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. It's he so, who walks. So I, I want to ask Kate and Alana, how terrifying is that creature if you, when you finally watch on screen? Because I don't know. If, I think it was probably what CGI. Um, for sure, for sure. You probably, you probably oh, look no, at it. What it was, Kate? What were we acting opposite? Oh, it was a pineapple on a stick, a long stick. Yeah, and the crew member would just walk around like this. He yeah. like walk, around, but the way he walked too, like he was trying to make it scary, but it just was funny. And we were all, and Lucas is yelling over and Kurt, it's terrifying. You, 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 you're terrifying for your life. You know, but let me see it in your eyes. And we're trying not to laugh because it's so thing. But the monster makes or breaks a, a horror but, movie, in my opinion. Gig. If I, and, you know, have you seen the monster? You you watched it? I have watched. Yeah. What did you think? I thought it was terrifying myself. I, I, I could close my eyes and kind of still see it. <laughs> Listen, let, let me interject here. So it's interesting because we were, we did have like a guy walking with a, a very tall stick because the monster is like nine feet tall. And, um, and, and it's a pineapple or a ball. And it's really interesting because when I look at these kids, in spite of that fact, they all give really evocative performances. It really looks like when that monster is walking into the barn, they're, they're not, you know, they're, and these are not actors, most of them. And so I, I came to commend these kids. I couldn't commend them more for the, what they were able to do with a pineapple. <laughs> you know what's unique to gig though? If you think like when you see how anything that like impacts the corn, it's not only the monster that moves, but the corn waves with it. I thought that was such a great addition. It's like he is linked. There is a, it's like the vein connection. It's not just that singular creature, but that he who walks is all of that mass of corn, which is, I but, think, really. Well, well, you know, I don't know if you noticed, but when he steps, those roots, those weird white roots that corn have, they go into the ground every time he steps. So, I don't know if you know. Take pay attention. Yeah, he's every time he plants, literally plants, not figuratively, but literally plants his foot every step he takes, or she. <laughs> it it seems like Kurt, Kurt's telling me you got to watch the movie again and again. And again. <laughs> <laughs> That's right. All right, and you got to go to do, in the theater too, and pay for it every that time. True. Well said. Well said. Well, thank you everyone uh, for uh, speaking to us about uh, Children of the Corn, and every, everyone definitely needs to check it check it out uh, in theaters, as Kurt actually mentioned. And now, for some unknown reason, I am picturing a pineapple monster in, <laughs> in my head. Yeah, you can't, yeah, you can't yeah. close the door on that one. <laughs> oh. okay, that well, thank you very much, and my cat says good night. Thank, thank you, you, Gig. Thank yeah. you, Nina Mujer. Yeah. Nina Mujer. <laughs> thank you. Bye now.